In this five-part series, we'll be discussing everyone's favorite subjects, death and real estate. The first video discusses powers of attorney and the different types that should be considered when preparing for the inevitable. Let's take a listen. So, Erica, let's move into uh, discussing about um, powers of attorney. Uh, you know, it could be, there are some topics, just like when somebody mentions hospice, you know, that we just immediately think of a certain situation. But we can be talking about senior citizens. We can be talking about people who are 30, 40 years old and they become ill. Uh, what would you suggest uh, or how would you say that somebody should go about when they're choosing who they're going to have in charge of? Um, well, the first thought that comes to mind is don't choose me because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of a situation <clears throat> with a client, friend, who named me as their power of attorney. So it came, it, it, it became very apparent um, that his choice of using me was because he knew I cared about him and would take care of him, and also that um, I was independent, that I could make decisions on his behalf if he wasn't able to make decisions for himself. So that was pretty important in terms of who he chose um, for um, most people, you want to make sure that it's somebody who will follow your wishes. Because if you need somebody to be your um, agent, which is the correct term for somebody who mm -hmm. becomes a power of attorney, if you want somebody to be your agent, you want it to be somebody that you trust. It may be family. It may be a spouse or a child that you trust. It may be um, some other trusted advisor should always check with them first to make sure that it's something that they w are willing to do because it can be very time consuming and it can be very emotional mm -hmm. to have to make decisions for a friend or a spouse that are um, a, a, an Illinois pro property power of attorney is going to be only for property. It's not the medical power of attorney to make medical decisions. It's not um, a durable power of attorney to make the decisions as to whether you live or die, get medical treatment, don't get medical treatment. A power of attorney for property is to deal with the property. And it can be as expansive as anything that you have to deal with, like your um, uh, financial accounts, your stocks and bonds, your um, uh, safe deposit box. It can be that expansive or it can be limited to just your real estate and financial accounts so that you can deposit money into the account after a closing has occurred. But it's really pretty critical that you make sure that it's somebody who has those elements that I just mentioned, that there's somebody who cares about you, somebody you trust, um, and somebody who's going to be willing to serve. The mere fact that you've named somebody as a power of attorney doesn't mean that they have to accept that appointment. And you can have somebody as a secondary you option can. as well? You can. You can. You can have them on the same form, that if the person you've named as your agent won't serve, uh, there's someone else named after them. You can, you can name co-agents for a power of attorney. It's not a great idea. It's a little murky. Yeah. It could. Yeah, because people don't always agree with yeah. each other. You know, Especially people, if it's like two siblings and like yeah. you know, mom wouldn't want that, dad would want that. Yeah. And, and you know, people have different agendas. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's, it's really best to decide um, which of the people who you might choose for power of attorney will best serve in the capacity of you, mm -hmm. the decisions you would make, but now they're making them for you. And, and not to insult anyone because it's not necessarily a bad thing to be quote-unquote emotional, but choosing somebody who... Um, you know, you, you feel more confident that they have a strong enough character to deal with the other family members who are chiming in. That's really a very good point. Um, the person who you want to choose as your power of attorney has to be able to stand up to other people who might be saying, might be doing one of two things. They might be saying, 
do this, do that, push um, and direct and, and try and impose their own uh, position, or who might try and undermine you and uh, try and uh, remove your rights as a power of attorney, as an agent. Because there's a big difference when, I mean, to talk about uh, power of attorney for health matters, right? It, it's you're, you're choosing somebody who's going to advocate for you while you're still living and on a ventilator or whatnot. But after, after you're passing, you're choosing somebody who's going to advocate for the wishes that you had while you were still alive. Correct. And that is true of real estate because you want to make sure that uh, if there's a division of property that needs to be done, which really needs to be done through a trust or a will or, or something like that, but to even get the property on the market, to have you have the right to list a piece of property. You've got to have the right person able to sign the contract. Yeah. Otherwise, the contract is void. Yeah. And I've had those situations where <laughs> you have the trustee and they can't make a decision because they're just so distraught you know, with grief. Um, what, what advice would you give to uh, the surviving loved ones who have to deal with, you know, uh, you know their, their parent or loved one chose this person to be their agent? Um, and now this person's trying to make you follow through and execute their loved one's wishes while they were still alive. Uh, what advice would you give to the support group? Rather than the support group, it really the advice goes to the person who is granting the power of attorney. Talk to your family. Mm -hmm. Tell them what you're doing. Tell them what your plans are. It always used to be that we would hide our estate planning, we would hide our wills, we wouldn't tell anybody what we were doing, and it would just be this big surprise yeah, yeah. When, when the will reading came yeah. about. And what you really want to do is elicit support from your family for the decisions you want to make and the way you want things to be done on your behalf. And the best way to do that is to fight it out ahead of time mm -hmm. instead of leaving it to... Um, what might wind up to be the weakest link, yeah. the person who can't stand up to the family members who are going to try and push them to, to resolve things. At some point, they're going to fight about it. It's either going to be before it happens or, or after it happens. Yeah, it really is better to make sure that um, everyone understands that this is the principal's um, wishes and that it's not and the agent is carrying out their wishes instead of that um, the agent is being um, pushed into a situation that they're making decisions that are their own mm -hmm. instead of the principal's decisions. If you found this video to be informative and helpful, make sure you show us some love and hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to catch our next video where we talk about how to better prepare with your family while you're still with them. If there's something you feel we didn't cover or you have a question, make sure to leave a comment. See you next time. Thank you for spending some time with us. We'll see you at the next one.